over 20,000. Silence. Madison then. A deadly goal kicker, as deadly as Botica. And that's how deadly he is. That's an excellent conversion from Terry Madison. Well, this is the reason why it stunned the crowd. Lovely pass there. You'll see the dummy there by Walters. The long out wide. Let's hold it there. The fullback has come at an angle, and you'll notice the gap. He's through. That was a very well worked try. So Wigan restart, trailing now by six points to two. Just uh, almost 19 minutes to go. Uh, it's gone in this uh, first half, rather, and what a mistake it was from the fullback Andre Stoop. Just a little knock on, but Brisbane made Wigan pay the ultimate price. They certainly did, and that's the kind of team that they are. They will make you pay inside your own quarter. Unfortunately for Stoop, he doubled the mistakes up. He came up with the, the error that created the scrum feed. And then he was the man that missed the tackle. So he'll be looking to make up for that, inject himself. As Trevor Gilmeister takes the ball forward. A bit of a spring in the step now for these Brisbane players. Yes, they've suddenly started to fancy this. Langer with the kick downfield. Good kick too, because it means that Stoop has to run right across the other side of the field to pick up. Good thinking there by Alan Langer. Putting pressure on Andre Stoop straight away, realising two mistakes. Farrah buried underneath the challenge from the prop forward G and Kerrod Walters. The crowd absolutely stunned by that uh, try from Julian O'Neill. They've gone very quiet, the Wigan crowd. Oh, and a fire, took his eye off the ball, drops it. Another mistake. And very fortunate for Wigan that it was Gilmeister out there in support of Willie Kahn. If it had been a speed man, we may well have seen a try in the corner. But what a great tackle by Chris Johns. He really did go into him. Great play, Laz uh, Lazarus unloads to Langer. Brisbane ominously starting to click up a gear, Hone to Kevin Walters. Walters back to the try scorer, O'Neill, big gap again ahead of O'Neill. Good tackling by Neil Cowie. Matteson is the acting halfback, this is Langer. Looking to weave some magic, lovely reverse pass to, almost let uh, Gilmeister in. Brisbane Broncos haven't finished, this is Kerrin Walters and he's just held up about half a metre short, it's the last tackle Langer will spread it wide, Matteson dabs the ball forward and luckily for Wigan, they were alert to it, they knock it dead A oh, wonderful kick through, they nearly caught the Wigan defence snapping there, Renouf was flying through that was a lovely kick by Madison, and it came off Renouf as well But Wigan are under some pressure here. Trailing six points to two. 21 minutes of this first half gone, and Peter Hutton on sideline has news of Andy Platt's injury. It looks like a bad one for Andy Platt. The doctors immediately said he needs x-rays. It's a rib injury he got in the first few moments. So Andy Platt obviously in serious trouble. One to watch out for as well is that Brisbane might need to make a blood bin substitution. Trevor Gilmice looks like he's got a small cut above his eyes. So Gilmeister with the uh, touch of blood on his face, but the bad news from Wigan's point of view is that Andy Platt on his way for some x-rays, but that's a, a good kick ahead by Sean Edwards. Well, I don't know if it's that advantageous, Eddie. He does find touch, and he probably picked up 30 or 35 metres, but it is a Brisbane scrum feed in still a reasonably fair position. They are in front on the scoreboard six points to two, and they will win this scrum feed. I think maybe if you can kick without finding touch a lot of times, it may be just that little bit more advantageous. It's Langer's feed at this scrum. And the crowd on that far side screamed that he was feeding. Just went, I think, uh, behind the front row's legs, maybe. And is that a touch of British bias? Mike? Oh, they don't bother these days. And I think we saw last Saturday at Wembley that anything goes. The one thing that you will find the crowd reacting against the Alan Langer feed is a lot of times he tends to throw the football in before the scrums have even packed. So it gets out fairly quickly. Here come the Broncos again. That's a lovely move. And this is Renouf. We know this fellow can move. Home gets the ball to Kevin Walters. And Walters is in under the sticks. 
right under the black dot for Kenneth Walters. And the Brisbane Broncos in the last five minutes have cut Wigan to pieces. Excellent play here. The switch to the blind, the loose forward it was. Terry Madison to the dummy. He's opposite. Clark missed him. He was struggling there. Good step there by Renouf. And this is where the support play comes in. Mark Holm. And look at the man go. No one is going to stop him. That is a good try. Good support play. One of the beauties of this Brisbane team is their ability for all the players to use the football. Here we see the big dummy. Clark really fell for that one. That allowed them to get in behind the defence. And then the players, well, they were there in numbers. And finally, it was Kerrod Walters, the man, placing the ball under the black dot. Kerrod Walters. He was wanting a big match because brother Steve did so well at Wembley last Saturday and he has managed to score a try right under the black dot as Peter Sterling says or the red dot as it is here at Central Park and that is meat and drink for Terry Madison from that range. Let's see the quick thinking, the running out wide, let's stop it there. That's the dummy, Clark was very slow, he took it, that was the opening. And really, that was good thinking by Brisbane. And I've been fairly spot on with Terry Madison struggling with the goal kicking tonight, Steve. Oh, he's kicked two from two, one from almost the sideline. So the Brisbane Broncos are ahead by 12 points to two. And Wigan, well, they started like a house on fire, Mike. And we now will find out what they are made of. Well, they're a pretty good side, that, that is no doubt. They will come back into it. They'll probably just try to settle things down and get back into the swing of things, their game plan. More kick down field so they can really start working their forwards. They didn't take advantage of the possession they had early, and they're going to suffer for that. Well, it's gone very, very quiet here at Central Park. There are 20,000 people and more holding their breath. Wigan out of the traps very quickly, like greyhounds, but it's the Broncos who have scored the two tries that could be crucial come the end of the day. Bottica finds Edwards, he finds Betts. Suddenly, the crowd finds its voice. No doubt about it, Eddie, this Wigan side will bounce back. There's too much class and too much pride out there. They've not come over for a holiday, the Broncos, Peter, as uh, one or two of the other clubs have perhaps been accused of in the past. Well, I think the big advantage that they've had coming into this game, is, unlike the other Australian teams that have played, is the fact that they've had players preparing for a test match only a week previous. And I, I guess that they're well aware that they can create a little bit of history tonight to be the first team from Australia to win this club challenge. The one thing I would like to see out there is a change in the refereeing from, from Mr Hale He's very, uh, certainly allowing a lot of the players to lie in the tackled area. And that's not allowing either of these teams to play the football quickly. If he can do that, we'll see some sparkling attacking play from both of these teams. Well, that was surely a knock-on from Alan Langer at the play the ball. But referee Dennis Hale turned a blind eye and allows them to play on. This is Mark Hone. Let's have another look at it here. Well... I think he just moved it forward with his foot, so perhaps Dennis Hale is correct. Nothing will convince the Wigan crowd here that he was, but still, this is Renoff again. This fellow is a star in the making, there's no doubt. Only a youngster, but my word, what talent. That touched a Wigan hand, it'll be six to go. It's O'Neill for the Broncos. Yes, six more, says referee Hale. It's a good job as well that Clark got his hand to that ball because there was five Broncos out wide. So yet more pressure for the English champions, Wigan, facing the Australian challenge of the Brisbane Broncos. Kerrod Walters in possession for them. Langer, Kevin Walters, Johns just went through his arms, but uh, Renault was there. And eventually they'll bring him down, but he still manages to get the ball away. Khan dabs it forward. And that's good play by Andre Stoop. Stoop motoring down the touchline. And right behind him was Michael Hancock, who finishes off the job second time round. Wonderful play by both sides, but Andre Stoop, plenty of skills there. Many a fullback would have just been happy to get in the field of play. He wasn't, he raced up 30 yards. 
certainly been a personality already the former Namibian rugby union fullback but uh, it's a scrum knock on yes and that won't please John Maney a mistake made on the third tackle Lazarus tried to pick the ball up on the fly so no advantage played there and a Brisbane feed five meters inside the Wigan half let's see how he feeds the scrum feed is the operative word Kevin Walters ball goes to ground Cowie and Langer wrestling for it ball comes free referee says neither side had it properly well Chris Johns there was flattened by Dean Bell Bell was coming in he knew what was happening and he's in a lot of trouble there I thought it was a poor pass from Kevin Wallace it really did put Chris Johns under a lot of pressure you can see there a touch of concussion Dean Bell one of the potent defenders in international rugby league and he's come up with a great shot on Chris Johns but a difficult one a player is going downwards to reach out for the ball to be taken out by one of the toughest three quarters in the world as you mentioned Peter Dean Bell to his feet here's the challenge again oh, and he really did get his face buried in the central park turf didn't he well apart from being hit hard he also fell very awkwardly and he's staggering off the field at the moment as dean bell takes it up for wigan and that's wigan's first scrum 6-1 is the count at the scrum to the broncos a fire has drifted in field looking for the football it's now with clark and edwards he finds Dennis Betts. That's great tackling from Renouf. Tackling all square, 50-50. Wigan in possession. On the fourth tackle with Edwards. He waited for Botica. Botica looked for Farah. That's the last one. Well, Farah was looking for the second phase of attack there. It just wasn't there. The high kick from Botica, one for O'Neill, O'Neill drops it, but behind him, fortunately, was wonderful, cover. Wonderful kick there, O'Neill was taking him, taken out, I felt, but good cover there by Kevin Walters. That's what his job is, to go round the back in case there's a mistake. Had a wonderful season, didn't he, uh, O'Neill, and here we go again, Skerritt in and there's a, another fight. Tempers running high. Yes, a lot of feeling out there. Andrew G was taken fairly high there by Kelvin Skerritt. And he did throw the football away, which, again, won't please his coach. We're hoping that he hasn't given away a penalty while in possession, but I do think it will be Kelvin Skerritt, the man penalised, and he'll be heading to the blood bin very shortly. Here he is, the big swinging arm. It did get him high. No doubt about it. And really, this referee should start to get a little bit more grips. Start showing a few cards. There you can see they've lost total control. The referee caught one there. He knows he's in a pretty tough fight. And it's penalty to the Broncos for the swinging arm. And Skerritt must surely take some time in the blood bin to be patched up. But I think about time we saw at least a yellow card, Mike, just to cool the tempers down. Well, it would help, and I think that uh, both coaches will be saying to their teams, look, come on, let's not lose this composure. Both these sides have won wonderful trophies on both sides of the world because of their composure. Tonight, they're losing it. Chris Johns coming off to the touchline as well. And uh, number 15, it's Tony, Tony Curry. Curry has come on. Meanwhile, the rugby league continues in the World Club Challenge, but Peter Hutton's been keeping an eye on the goings-on on the touchline. Peter? Well, the news, first of all, on Chris Johns. The Brisbane decided to take a look at him out there on the pitch for a while. He took a bad bang to the head after the collision with Dean Bell. It didn't improve, though, so he's come off and Tony Curry's come on to replace him. The substitution for Wigan, the bloodbin substitution, Ian Lucas coming on to replace Kelvin Skerritt. So Lucas is on from the blood bin to replace uh, Skerritt. Well, he definitely, definitely dropped the ball there, Terry Madison. There's some big hits coming off out there. A lot of niggling and a lot of talking. There's Ian Lucas. 
bit disgruntled that he can't get regular first team football here at Central Park but uh, preferred to see it through for the time being and again Eddie I do think that a lot of the frustration out there between these sides is the fact that the play the balls are so slow the referee really is allowing the tackler to lie in that tackle for much too long and it is frustrating the players Frustrating the players, frustrating the crowd too. Seven minutes to half time. The Broncos' lead is 10 points. 12 points to two. That's a better kick from Edwards. Michael Hancock has it for the Broncos. He's going back across the face of play. It was a poor attempt at a tackle from a fire. But not so by Ian Lucas and Neil Cowie, the two substitutes. Garrett disappearing to have stitches in that eye wound, no doubt, and come back later. Wigan's defence around the rucks is not as strong as what it has been. They really are making uh, yardage, this Brisbane side. This is Mark Hone, and that's the last one. Expect the kick from Langer. He's closed down by Edwards. He gives it instead to Kenneth Walters. Walters tries to get rid, can't do so. Lucas has it. Well, that was awful play from the Broncos. Good pressure from Wigan. What on earth was Kenneth Walters thinking of there? He should have just held on to it and give the handover. And if Lucas had looked outside, he had Dean Bell unmarked. McGinty eventually gets to his feet. Edwards, Bottica. Clark's arriving at speed, Bottica holding on. A fire in at dummy half. Edwards. Farrah. And Stoop through one, through two. Can he get through three? The ball's back with Sean Edwards, but we're going to have knocked on. Wonderful play by the fullback. Before this, it was a bad pass, really, but he tried to keep the ball alive. Farad was too low. A wasted opportunity there, but let's be fair, the fullback did work well. Edwards stuck an arm out, planted the ball over the whitewash. Some of the crowd, they celebrated, but Mr. Hale's whistle had blown, and rightly so. So it's with Hancock. Kevin Walters in a dummy half. And Tony Curry there playing the ball, formerly with Leeds, two spells at Headingley, 1984, 85 and 85, 86. Ball drops, but it's a penalty against Wigan for Brisbane. Pandemonium on the terraces. Yes, off you was away. But you'll actually see Kerrod Walters appealing to the referee. He knew that the players were offside. Dennis Pitts never in front in the marker position. And it was going to be a penalty, but he did take a risk there, Kevin Walters. Ironic cheers as Michael Hancock drops the ball. And it's a relieved Wigan crowd, I can tell you. Because this Brisbane Bronco side is stretching the Wigan defence. Quick tap there, nearly caught them. Edwards gets the ball back from the scrum. This is Jason Robinson. They call him the new Ellery Hanley in this part of the world, Jason Robinson. Only 18. This is Andrew Farrar. The opportunities for Martin of Fire again limited here tonight. This now is Clark. Well, I think one of the big problems that we're going to find is that Frano Botica and Sean Edwards are not linking together. They really aren't working. It wouldn't surprise me to see Martin Crompton come onto the field very soon. I do think Sean Edwards is getting caught with the football much too much, do they? Coming back to the blind side on a lot of occasions and running back into traffic, so not creating anything. He is the key player out there, but I think he'd be better off letting the ball go maybe more often. Botica. He dabs it down. It's well read by Willie Kahn. And yeah. Dennis Betts cleans him up. Pretty right there, Peter. As I mentioned, I wouldn't be surprised to see Edwards go into the standoff position. Crompton come out into the scrum half, especially in the second half. Kerrod Walters now for the Broncos. He releases it to Langer. And Langer, great tackle coming in on him from Martin Dermott. 
Quite a few people I know in Australia upset at the challenge by Dermot last Saturday on uh, Fittler. Nothing wrong with that one, though. Copybook tackling. And he is copybook running now from the second row of Gilmeister. He has got support out wide from Hancock. Hancock for the corner. No, he touched it down. Oh, great but tackle. the touch judge there says that he put a foot in touch first. Andre Stoop, a magnificent tackle coming across here. Hancock had to score the try. There's the ball going down. It's a line ball decision, but the touch judge is in good position. Well, you can see that the flag has been moved by Stoop's head rather than Hancock's body. 50-50. Goes Wigan's way. They're relieved. And again, tremendous work by the back row of the Brisbane team. Andrew G threw a marvellous face ball to put Gilmeister into space. And then he looked for support. He had run off one side, opted to go to Hancock, and it was all but a try. It was a very close decision, wasn't it? Could have gone either way. Touch judge, though, in no doubt. So the gap stays at 10 points. Broncos 12, Wigan 2. Two minutes to half time. It's amazing the ease that the Broncos are working the blindside moves and finding the gap. Edwards tried to find a fire. Knock on. A fire thought his moment had come here. Well, it was a work move that brought a fire in from the wing. I have a slight suspicion that a fire might have been looking at Alfie Langer rather than the football. Here come the Broncos again. Wigan really having to work overtime in defence, getting tested as they are rarely tested in the First Division Championship. This is Tony Curry. Offloads the ball to Willie Kahn. Kahn strokes them off. Almost through, Andre Stoop and Dean Bell just managed to pull him down. But interference at the play the ball. Penalty to the Broncos. They're going to run it with Langer. This again is Gilmeister. He unloads to G. G keeps the movement going. Finds Willie Kahn. Well, that's the greatest show of confidence I've ever seen. Taking a quick tap there. Two points on offer, but they've gone for six. And they're after them with Alan Langer. Langer is just teasing with them now. He really is taking control. The Wigan defence don't know what he's going to do next. Kerrod Walters looking for his brother, Kevin. And the referee's whistle's gone. Knock on again is the decision. Hone thought his moment had come. Well, I come back to the decision once again to take the quick tap. In retrospect, it is now a wrong one. 12 points to two. It was a relatively easy kick. 14-2 is two converted tries clear. And you'd rather be 12 clear than 10. Edwards picks himself up. Bell is the dummy half. Jason Robinson now. They really are getting examined, though, aren't they, Wigan in defence? Well, there's little doubt that at half-time, their coach, John Boney, will be saying to them, the one thing that's won them so many trophies has been that magnificent defence. And yet tonight, it just seems to be ripped apart. Lucas was the man driving, and uh, Lazarus in with the shoulder to help him down. There's the half-time siren. Booze all around the stadium, but you have to admire the Brisbane Broncos for the way that they have warmed to the task here. They've scored two excellent tries. Wigan leading briefly. Julian O'Neill got them underway, the Broncos, with the first try. It's 12-2 to the Broncos at half-time. Well, Paul Vorton, a very entertaining game in the uh, club championship uh, and the, the Broncos in front 12-2, but uh, they could have probably had a couple more tries. A little unlucky there at the end. They were disallowed, didn't they, Ken? They're playing some great football. Wigan at this stage not on their game. Uh, very disappointing, some of their players. I think they're missing Andy Platt, who went off injured in that first half, and some of the other forwards haven't aimed up, especially in the back row. Dennis Betts is going pretty well, but players like Clark and McGinty not aiming up, and Sean Edwards uh, seems to be playing a lone role out in the backs as well. I think the variety that the Brisbane Broncos forwards have too has probably got them in uh, sixes and sevens, because it's not often you see forwards who can run like backs and got a couple of good steps in amongst them. Well, Glenn Lazarus is having an outstanding game uh, up the middle. He's taking the yards as they uh, very easily up the middle. 
And that'll, that's allowing blokes like Madison and Gilmeister, as we've seen, to hunt out wide, and they've made a lot of breaks. Even Mark Haynes found himself out in the open. A lot of skill in that back row, as we saw in the last uh, few weeks of the competition in the semi-finals, and they've continued that form. Well, let's take a look at the uh, Broncos' first try. And, uh, boy, isn't this young fellow so good? There's Julian O'Neill at fullback, and uh, we'll have a talk about it in just a few moments' time. The Broncos who are in possession. This is a great one from O'Neill, the fullback. O'Neill scores the first try. Julian O'Neill, a teenager in the grand final just over a month ago. And now at 20, he's got the Broncos rolling. It's all about keeping the ball out wide. The missed tackle there. They paid the price. Andre Stoop comes in. Robinson too late. Well, this came from a mistake by, by Stoop in the first place when he dropped the ball. And it turned out to be a three-on-three -three situation. Simple fact of the matter was that Stoop let O'Neill get on the outside of him, especially in the backs from a scrum. You should always defend on the outside of your man. But Stoop was a bit lazy, and O'Neill showed a lot of skill and ability and a bit of pace there to get away from Stoop. And uh, he's had a fine game in Andre Stoop back at the full-back position on that occasion. After making the initial mistake and then missing the tackle, uh, he's had a bit of a shocker there. What a, what a, a terrific kid he is, though, Julian O'Neill. Everything he does seems to just uh, turn into something that's very, very classy. And if we were looking for fullbacks, I know uh, young Tim Brasher is obviously a candidate these days and got out from Newcastle, but there's another one, class. Yeah, I, would have, uh, I would, wouldn't have worried me if he had gone overseas. I think he deserved to go overseas, actually, uh, in one of those fullback positions. But not only can he play fullback, he can play lock forward, 5'8 or centre. Uh, at will, so he's a, he's a great player. Let's take a look at the second Broncos try coming up right now, and that was, of course, scored by Kerrod Walters. Here come the Broncos again. That's a lovely move, and this is Renew. We know this fellow can move. Home gets the ball to Kerrod Walters, and Walters is in under the sticks, right under the black dot for Kerrod Walters, and the Brisbane Broncos in the last five minutes have cut Wigan to pieces. This is great work by Terry Madison, who comes from the open side of the blind. And they had a four-on-three situation there. Clark was in two minds, and Madison sold the dummy and went through. Great piece of evasion there by Renouf. And good play by these two players in Hone and Wallers. They had, um, Wallers had been the dummy half, Hone had been in support behind him. And that's just good uh, anticipation by those two players to keep backing up on the inside. Madison uh, had a great semi-final series. That's a nice little dummy, equal to anything that Alan Langer could do. And Renouf, and um, it was always going to be a try from there. And a lot of, uh, a lack of cover there by Wigan, who just uh, are not playing well at all. All right, uh, I mean, we talk about this runoff. I mean, I sometimes, a few people from Illawarra are very disappointed, obviously, that their centres, McGregor and uh, Rodwell, didn't make it into that uh, World Cup squad. But it uh, seems we've got a lot of good centres running around right now. But doesn't Renoff run to the break very, very well? Runs to the gap, which is what the game's all about. If you've got two or three players in front of you, you should always try and look for a gap. And he does that extremely well. And he's worked very well with Kevy Walters um, over the last few weeks. And we saw uh, when uh, Walters came on in the, the final last week, in the World Cup final, he threw a beautiful pass to Renault. He got on the outside of his man, Devereux, and scored the winning try for us. And he's continuing on tonight. He's having a great game. What about in years to come? Probably see McGregor on the inside and maybe Renault on the outside. Could do. Well, Mal's been around for a long time. And... Um, he, he probably is at the end of his career, and players like McGregor, Rodwell, we're going to have some great centres for the years to come. Well, your little mate uh, Gilmeister uh, set up what looked like to be uh, the third try for the, the Broncos. wasn't to be, but boy, it was a good effort and a probably a good decision by the referee in the end. Nothing wrong with that one, though. Copybook tackling, and he is copybook running now from the second row of Gilmeister. He has got support out wide from Hancock. Hancock for the corner. No, he tucks it down. Oh, great but tackle. the touch judge there says that he put a foot in touch first. And a good decision there by the touch judge. Um, great play by the fullback there and Andre Stutt to get across and, and get Hancock. But it was a fine break made by Gilly, who first time he's been in the open since about <laughs> 1971, I think. Didn't know what to do, but he found Hancock on the outside. Yeah. Unlucky for the Brisbane side, but they've got a good lead at halftime. They lead 12-2. Team tackles there, they're about even. Uh, the penalties were 5-1 at one stage in favour of Wigan, but Brisbane pulled a few back. Handling errors, that's OK on, on a on a steamy night over there, and the possession's about even. So there's not much in the game in the stats, but on the scoreboard, Brisbane is leading 12-2, and Ken, they're looking ominous. Um, in the last 20 minutes of that first half, they were making 
uh, breaks at will. The signs are there, they might just do something that uh, you weren't able to do. Yes, what, win? <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> okay, good on you, mate. We'll be back right after the break. Welcome back. Right now, let's go back to Central Park, Wigan, for our commentators, Eddie Hemmings, Mike Stevenson, and our own Peter Sterling. Wigan back out, led by their captain, Dean Bell. A big ask of this team, Sean Edwards, the halfback, a big ask of the Mike to come back, trailing by 10 points, but uh, as the Broncos return, can they come back? Oh, yes, they're a very talented side, but they've got to get themselves organised. The forward pack has got to work a little bit more than they showed after the first 15 minutes. They really have not hunted, they've ne really not supported the man with, in possession of the ball. And quite frankly, I don't think the halfback combination is working tonight. And the crowd, Mike, will also play an important part because, come on, there's a big crowd here, but they've been very, very quiet, haven't they? And they're giving Dennis Hale a right roasting as he comes off on now. Well, it's not surprising for the merry whistleblowers when they come to Central Park, but uh, despite some of the decisions that may have been on show in the first 40, Wigan and the fans can only look at the fact that their defensive tactics has not been all that good. So we're live and exclusive here on Sky Sports tonight with the second half of this World Club Challenge. Wigan entertaining the Brisbane Broncos and the Broncos ahead by 12 points to two and it's going to be the Broncos who get this second half underway. 40 minutes between Wigan and the world crowd. I do think, Eddie, that's the kind of play we'll see from Sean Edwards, letting the ball go. I'm sure that John Money at halftime would have told him that he needs to pass the football more. And if that's not the case, we may not see Sean Edwards playing in the seven shirt out there. He really has still at their attack on many occasions. And I'm sure that John Money will have addressed that problem. It's Dean Bell, the captain, who's in possession for Wigan. Dermot, the dummy half. Dennis Betts, one of the big, strong runners who always runs straight and hard and true in the cherry and white of Wigan. It's now with Edwards. He will hammer one down towards the corner, but underneath it is Willie Kahn. And Peter Hutton has some news from the Wigan dressing room. Peter. Well, no sign of well, the message from a we shall I am here, Adam, the, the message from a very fine Wigan dressing room. Maybe in the Wigan dressing shed, Eddie. <laughs> Maybe it was a little bit quiet in there. I doubt it. I'd rather think that John Money must have had a lot of words to say. Anyway, we'll catch up with Peter Hutton in a moment or two. In fact, he's there now with the microphone, Peter. Well, the message from the Wigan dressing room was throw the ball wide. They came out very fired up, and that's what the players were saying as they came out of the dressing room. Throw the ball wide. Let's try and run at them. Top of the tackle counts for the way for Wigan. Dennis Betts with 16, with Sean Edwards just behind him on 13. Andre Stoop has it for Wigan. Just inside his own quarter line, taken out by Kevin Walters. This now is Dennis Betts again. Kerrod Walters, the man in with the challenge. Tony Curry there, just in case. Skerritt all patched up, now with the head bandage on, back out of the blood bin, Edwards and Clark, through one Clark, almost through two, Neil Cowie was up there in support, couldn't keep his feet, Botica, good ball, quick hands, Andre Stoop, much better play by Wigan, they're keeping the ball alive and trying to get it out wide as their coach suggested at the half-time break. Willie Kahn, met by Andrew Farrer. And they're aided by a great play, the ball from Philip Clark, who made half the break. Again, I was fairly surprised to see Edwards take the option of kicking the football there. He had a lot of support on the last tackle. Maybe that is an option that Wigan should look to take, running the football ball when it does come to an end, then try and get a kick in. It's Andrew G who's in possession for the Broncos. This now is home, the big second row. He's lost it. He surrendered possession to Sean Edwards, who wants to get on with it quickly. This is Bell. Suddenly the Wigan crowd have come alive. 
they can sense perhaps a chink in the Broncos armor Dermot Skerritt missed out they find Edwards he finds Clark Clark finds Botica only just Wigan in possession again with Edwards but Edwards going nowhere met fairly and squarely by Matteson ran down a blind alley there this is Cowie well Wigan was setting up for a move there and it went all astray last tackle back to Edwards I don't think he was quite expecting that he's tipped one up and over the top looking for Robinson but that's great defense good defense from the winger Michael Hancock a oh, wonderful play here Hancock eyes on the ball at all time not interested in what was coming at him used his body very well also turned so that if the ball did come loose it would go backwards and got in the way of the chaser Steve Renoff try scorer at Wembley last week we've seen one run from him that created that uh, second try for the Broncos the second try that gave them 12 points we can have two Lazarus in possession for the Broncos grounded by Cowie Kerrod Walters is the dummy half running on his own Kerrod Walters given all the time in the world and he's found G G gives it to Langer Langer just stopped by the elbow of Dermot Langer finds O'Neill and Bell wraps up well we see a penalty here awarded against one of the Wigan players Dean Bell shaking the head the action was for the use of an elbow there I didn't see that there was anything in it and Dean Bell had every right to shake his head Langer was just hitting a collision well it was Dermot earlier than this this is the incident where Bell went in high but it was a hooker Dermot that launched himself and the referee Hale suggested that he went with his elbow play on Steve eh? well they're playing on now this is Kerrod Walters in at dummy half misses out Hone instead finds Gilmeister that's good tackling from Philip Clark a couple of the Brisbane guys uh, in the wars the fullback Julian O'Neill and also Michael Hancock have received attention but this is Kevin Walters on the charge for the Broncos he's given it to Renault good tackle but they can't keep them out it's the winger Michael Hancock Hancock jinking along the in goal area and touching down much to the displeasure of De Dennis Betts but improving the angle for the goal kicker quick incisive play again from the Broncos of Brisbane once again quick play of the ball and the full uh, the loose forward there sends Kevin Walters through an enormous gap wonderful pass out wide Renouf gets the ball away sliding down to the floor good support play a little bit over ambitious here Michael Hancock he should have put the ball down there that really is rubbing salt in the wound Terry Madison threw a great pass to Kevin Walters here but Neil Cowie is the man at fault there you see him coming in had to stay out on his man and that enabled Walters to run into free space got some speed men on the outside there's Renoff and that's a magnificent pass on his way to the ground to Michael Hancock he did improve the position but he did take a bit of a risk took the risk but didn't he have the confidence to do just that Hancock increases the lead improved the angle and Terry Matteson now has this conversion attempt to push the Broncos further towards the World Club Challenge trophy, but he misses. So it stays 16 points to two. Wonderful play. You'll see the ball come from Terry Matteson. Let's hold it there. That was the gap that's created by Cowie coming into Madison. He took him out, and that's how it came. Beautiful play. Keep the ball alive. Wonderful pass by Renouf. Good support play. Good try. Well, Clark did tune off as well. If he'd have gone in and attempted a tackle on Michael Hancock, which he had every right to do, you never know what could have happened. Maybe the ball will have spilled out. But Clark, he overread the situation. Wigan have made a change and Peter Hutton's got the details. 
in fact, two substitutions. The Wigan substitution is Martin Crompton has come on for Andre Stroop. More importantly, perhaps, though, is the Brisbane substitution. Alan Langer has come off after that hit by Martin Dermott. Langer troubled by the chest problem that almost kept him out of the game. So Brisbane have brought on their number 14, John Plath. So Plath is on for the Broncos. And as far as Wigan are concerned, they now have Frano Botica at full back. Edwards, I reckon, will go to standoff half, and Crompton will take his customary role as scrum half. He's been used as an emergency hooker this season, as the man that they signed from Warrington. But I think he'll be playing in the scrum half role for the remainder of this match. But Langer has gone. I wonder whether now is the time for Wigan to start having a go, Mike. Well, the opportunity is there, but let's give Brisbane the full credit for the fact that their defence has been very solid. They're moving up quickly out wide. They're not allowing Wigan to get this ball out wide. It's easy to say just spin it out and get it out to Martin O'Fire. You've got to try to get through this defence first. Here's Crompton. Gives it to Betts. Betts takes his eye off it and loses it. And unforced errors, something that normally does not appear in the Wigan dictionary. No, it should be a nightmare, really, for their coach, John Money. There's really? Plath, by the way, the substitute in 14, who's on for Langer. It's now with Kevin Walters, long pass to Renoff. Bell takes Renoff. Got him round the collar. And uh, Renoff lost his headgear then as well in the process. Lazarus again. There you see, Eddie, the Wigan defence. They're hanging back now. They're allowing Brisbane to get over that advantage line with ease. Kevin Walters aims it over to that far side where Jason Robinson controls it with his foot, then picks up and goes off. High swinger from Willie Carr, and he's flattened Jason Robinson. Well, he's certainly connected, but I think the impact really was on the shoulder first. The arm went through. The difference, Mike, tonight is that these tackles that we're seeing are being allowed to go by Dennis Hale, whereas, as we've seen in the Stones Bitter Championship all this season, they've been pulled up and penalties have been awarded. Couldn't agree with you more, but this guy is from New Zealand, and we're going to have to take it. The crowd are going to take it, and so are Wigan. Kelvin Scarrett, legs pumping, trying to find a hole down the middle. This is Edwards, now Dennis Betts. But the Broncos, they have that 16 point to two lead to defend, and defend it they are. Edwards, arrowing it towards the corner. Has it got enough legs on it to run dead? It has. We can go downstairs and pick up more news from Peter Hutton. Well, with me is Alan Langer, the Brisbane captain. Alan, I know you're off injured, but you must be pleased the way things have gone. Yeah, when you look at the scoreboard, it's a great uh, start to the game, especially in the second half. We've got a try and 16-2 leads, very good at this stage. What was your tactics as you approached this Wigan game? Well, you know, we, had, we knew we were going to get a very tough game for Wigan, but, uh, you know, they've uh, come out very tough and the, our players have given it back to their forwards and our forwards are going very strong at the moment. On your own injuries, what's happened? Well, I've just got a, you know, I had a sore sternum and I've just got a bit of a bump, so I'm not taking any, uh, more, any more part in this game, but uh, it's, it's no bad problems. And it looks like you're on for a good double. Australia win and a Brisbane win as well. I hope so, mate. There's still 30 minutes to go. Cheers, Alan. Yes, half an hour to go for Wigan to get back into this match. They'll fight all the way. Lazarus certainly didn't play that ball properly. Referee says it's all all right. But he has pinned number five. That's uh, Willie Khan for offside. Yes, he was offside there. Willie Kahn chasing through in the kick. The crowd certainly reacting. I've got no problem with that play of the ball. It wasn't a, it was a messy play of the ball, but he just didn't get it with the first strike of the foot. It took two or three, but there's nothing wrong with that. And Willie Kahn was certainly a mile and a half offside. But this is uh, Neil Cowie. Lazarus, the man doing the tackling. What a year it will be for Lazarus if he wins this one here tonight. The Ashes. The Winfield Cup, the World Cup, and now the World Club Challenge. Not too many players can point to a record like that after 12 months. Well, the minutes are ticking away for Wigan. This is a point, and there's a penalty given. 
for the swinging arm. This is a position that they really have to get points on the board. The minutes are ticking away. Terry Matheson climbing all over the back of him. It's Kelvin Skerritt. Now have Wigan got anything left in reserve? What a comeback it would be. Cowie. And Dermot trying to duck away. Couldn't get away, though, from the prop forward, Andrew G. Here comes Edwards again. Gets it to Bell. Bell drops it. Edwards picks up the pieces. He has Crompton in support. Edwards is going on his own. They see once again this Brisbane defence swarming. They're moving up out wide, and they even actually forced Wigan backwards then. Crompton's little kick ahead. A fire was off after it, but was taken out in back play. And now he will get in on the... Uh, tackling it himself if he can a good run there from Willie Khan but again a very ordinary kick from the Wigan side didn't put a great deal of pressure on Khan and it wasn't the last tackle they need to put a try on the board and they're not going to do it giving the football away that easily the Broncos again are swarming forward this is John Platt the man on in place of Langer he drops it though it's all very untidy out there and Renouf and Bottica scrambling for it well Plath just tried that little bit too extra too much extra there good run by the substitute but Wigan are shell-shocked really they're making breaks they're shell-shocked Mike and they're frustrated aren't they well it's something that they're not used to in the English game they have been so superior in defense for so many years it's something new to them this is where they've got to really lift themselves. There's still time to do it, but they need to score very quickly. And I think if they're going to score, it's going to be something individual because it's very difficult to teamwork to get through this defence. Edwards at standoff finds Bell. There is no holiday been taken here by the Brisbane Broncos. There's no doubt about that. Quarter of an hour of this second half gone. Quick hands from Wigan. Brilliantly tackled. Karen Walters. Copybook tackle. But the referee was blowing his whistle while we watched that, and he's brought the action back. Well, I'm not sure if he ruled a forward pass there, Mike. It's right in front of us. I didn't see anything wrong. In fact, it was great hands from both Bodica and Andrew Farah to put off here away. But what a marvellous tackle by Kerrod Walters, a hooker coming across in cover defence. Platt feeds. Platt gets the possession. Kevin Walters, McGinty thundering in on him and having a little word in his ear as well. Now it's Mark Hone and Peter Hutton has some more news on subs downstairs. Brisbane to make a change. Chris Johns is to come back on. He's said to come back on for the man who replaced him, Tony Curry. Johns haven't recovered from the head knock he took early on. Also, Wigan warming up a replacement. Sam Panapa could be on soon. Well... Chris Johns must have been in the blood bin. We're playing under international rules. O'Fire takes that uh, little kick over the top. Lovely little pressure kick there, but full credit to O'Fire. He was equal to the task. Betts. Wigan, not their usual inventive self, though, as you can see from that caption, both sides working hard in the tackle counts, but they're not inventive enough tonight, are they? Well, they do look to be a different team without Andy Gregory out there. I know I haven't seen a great deal of Wigan, and I haven't seen them without Andy Gregory, but he was the man that could always put on a big play. But I do think they're missing Andy Platt, not just for his defensive qualities and, and taking the ball forward, but he is a pivot on quite a few of their plays, and I really think that when he left the field, it did throw a lot of their attack into disarray. But not only that, Peter, is a man that leads by example, and I'm afraid Wigan do not have someone out there to take them forward. We saw that, didn't we, in the charity shield against St Helens pre-season, when Platt was not in dispute but not re-signing his contract. And uh, within 24 hours, after a 17-0 defeat by St Helens, Mr Platt had his name on the contract, Peter. Yes, Eddie, they should have let him go to Parramatta, I'm afraid. <laughs> We'd have taken him with open arms. And a rather large checkbook, no doubt, eh? Well, I think he's worth every cent. Gilmeister for the Broncos. Have Wigan got anything in reserve? 
16-2, 17 minutes of this second half gone. Time running out for them. Full credit to the Broncos. They're still trying to play open football when they could just rely on something like this. That's a kick downfield, though it's not the best. Wasn't bad. It's a differential penalty, of course, at the scrum. And here we see big Glenn Lazarus. He's got the taste for the kicking game now. He's actually taking the kick for touch and finds it about 12 metres out from the Wigan line. Well, Peter, is that just rubbing a little bit more salt in that wound? No, he does kick the football. He is quite a good kicker for a big man and for a front rower, I suppose. <laughs> Glenn Lazarus. The Broncos on the charge with Gilmeister. Stopped by Dermot. Panafa's there right behind him, just on. Big defensive effort now, wanted from Wigan because it's with Lazarus. Midway through this second half, 16-2. And Kevin Walters jinking, but Wigan closing the door. But still, Wigan under extreme pressure. Five metres out, a drop goal attempt. It was charged down by O'Neill. Six to go. The O'Neill drop goal attempt was charged down. The referee six to go and boos from the crowd again. Yes, I can't work out why they're booing that. There's no doubt that it came off a Wigan hand. So that put the Brisbane players onside straight away. I think like the Wigan crowd here, we see the replay of why the touch. Brisbane player taking it out. And see what the referee gives. Yes, it's deemed that the Brisbane player touching the ball when it touching the the line it's Crompton who's in possession for Wigan been very impressed Eddie with this uh, loose ball with Terry Madison not only in defense but in attack he's made some good runs and put through some lovely passes to send the support play through the gap Clark Trying to set something going with Bell, who finds Robinson. Robinson, Billy Wiz, they call him. He's a likely prospect, isn't he? He straightens up at every opportunity. I've actually spent a bit of time with him over the, the last couple of days. He's a very unassuming young player. And uh, I know that we can expect big things from him. Sean Edwards trying to break things up here with a little kick over the top, but Kevin Walters read it very nicely. And Philip Clark following up with the tackle there's the second half possession statistic for you and Brisbane have had a ton of support a, a ton of possession compared to Wigan well we're gonna have spilled the ball in the early part of their six we saw Sean Edwards try something different the little chip over once again this Brisbane defense absolutely excellent tonight it's 16 to the Broncos and two to Wigan the World Club challenge that has rested peacefully in this part of the world Ever since it uh, first came into being, Wigan won it against Manly and against Penrith. Last year, Witness won it against Canberra, but it could be Brisbane's night tonight. They could be taking it home. That could end up on the sideboard of the Broncos clubhouse alongside the Winfield Cup for this year. A high up and under, and underneath it first was Willie Kahn, ball drops, knock on, on the last tackle, it's the turnover. Oh, fire with a bit of space for a moment, but not for long. Peter Ryan has come on, it was Ryan, the substitute there, number 17, who brought a fire to the ground. And he's come on for Andrew G, the prop forward. Farrah unloads, a little unwisely, finds Clark. Wigan under so much pressure, Mike, aren't they? They don't get pressure like this in the uh, in the first division. Well, they look shell-shocked, don't they? They look confused. This Brisbane defence still going through the motions. They really are moving up quickly. A chip over the top. Edwards saw it. Edwards read it perfectly. He fancies a race with them. Fancies a race with O'Neill. Has Platt there. O'Neill's oh, made a big run. Biggest mistake of the night, and Edward 
Edwards was on it in the flash and touchdown. Well, Sean Edwards, it really did deserve this. A good kick here by the hooker, Dermot. He read it well, another kick through. I thought he kicked too short. You see, he looked towards where was Martin O'Fire. Now, O'Neill, he seems to take all the time in the world. He was very, very lax there. Well, he's been critical of Sean Edwards tonight for aspects of his play, but the one thing he hasn't stopped is trying, and his involvement has been very good. Again, probably that option wasn't great. There are a lot of Brisbane players in front of him, but you make your own luck in this game. Julian O'Neill lost his footing, and Edwards had done enough to be there, to be on the spot, to toe the ball over, and to register Wigan's first try. Tremendous try tally from Sean Edwards this season. 20 now already. They say as a support player, well, he had to create that one for himself. And Bodica adds the extra two. We're in for a finish. And if a crowd is going to lift the team, this is now the time. The fans becoming very vocal here. 16 points to eight in favour of Brisbane. And a quarter of an hour to go. Plenty of time. And Edwards, I wonder whether he has just clicked Wigan into gear. Well, I said it would take something individual, and it certainly was. And for once, the Brisbane defence was caught out there without a sweeper. Most unusual. This is Robinson. Can Wigan come back from the dead? It'll be a great test of nerve and character now for both sides. A quarter of an hour to go. Skerritt in possession for Wigan. Suddenly, Wigan are puffing their cheeks and their chests out here. And Mike, we were critical of Great Britain not putting the ball over the top in last week's test, and it was a, a little kick over the top from Martin Dermott that finally allowed them to score that try. This well, you, is Farah. You Sorry, Mike. Yeah, you couldn't say anything more as far as I'm concerned. I was also one that was critical of it. We should have done that. The times that we have beaten Australia and the times that we can beat Australian clubs is by breaking down that defence, by using the little chip over. It was proved there. A very obvious there that John Platt was playing in the second line. He normally is up, up front like Alan Langer. As Great. Julian O'Neill has tackled there, but he was back in the second line looking for the kick. Good tackling from Farah on O'Neill. This is Willie Kahn. Suddenly Wigan have stepped up a gear. The tackling is more ferocious. There's more enthusiasm in the Cherry and Whites. There's more enthusiasm on the terraces. That was a forward pass. Oh, that was forward by a mile. Terran Walters, now Madison. But suddenly, Wigan have to defend again. Kerrod Walters spreading the ball out wide. This is Kevin Walters. He's on his way to the corner. Walters! Oh, they've just held him up. Edwards the try scorer, Edwards there the try saver. Well, it was worth a try by the winger Michael Hancock there, but a lovely dummy run there by Kevin Walters. The one thing about this Brisbane side, Peter, is the fact that they won't just hang on for the lead. They'll still attack and try to add those extra points. Well, that does mean we are going to see a good 10 or 15 minutes to round this match off. As we see a mistake made here. Another replacement about to be made by Wigan. But both teams like to attack. They won't close up shop. Ian Lucas, who came on to replace Skerritt, who went to the blood bin earlier, is about to come back. Platt gets the possession from the scrum. And it sounds like it's going to be Philip Clark who's coming off. Meanwhile, this is runoff. Maybe Clark feeling the effects of that injury, which has dogged his training all week. Brisbane attacking down the blind side with Madison. Madison still, ball out to the far side, good defence. That's better defence from Wigan. Swarming defence, they're coming through. Madison trying to squeeze the wing in at the corner. He knows it can't be done. Hancock running down a blind alley there. Hope you're enjoying this, by the way, tonight, the World Club Challenge. Join us on Sunday for the best that the First Division has to offer back to the Stones bit of championship. St. Helens the leaders against Bradford Northern second. The big league at nine on Sunday. Here's a fire. This game is not over yet. A fire tackled in the end by Willie Carr. They've got numbers to the right here if they can promote the football. It's with Dermot. The ball out to Robinson. He read that one perfectly. Came onto it like a train. 
Good defense, though, from the Broncos. Run off the man with the tackle. And that's Madison on Kelvin Skerritt. You can see the ball being fed out wide by Dermot to Robinson, but the sliding defense in Brisbane was there all the time. Crompton, can he unlock this Brisbane defense? Can Bell, Will Farrer? Not this time. Last tackle. Panapa, the acting halfback. This now is Crompton. Hoist a high one. Up goes O'Neill. And O'Neill this time takes it clean as a whistle. Oh, wonderful take there by the fullback. Spinning, putting his body in between the onrushing forwards. It is a part of Julian O'Neill's game that he has worked on. He's copped some criticism in Australia about being a little bit dicey under a high ball. They put him under a lot of pressure in the grand final only a couple of weeks ago, and he defused that bomb very nicely. Ten minutes of this compelling World Club Championship to go. Wigan just eight points adrift. Lazarus buried beneath Skerritt and Cowie with a bit of help from Dermot who limps away clutching the arm he's had some trouble with the elbow this season has uh, Martin Dermot Botica now playing at full back jinking still going Botica good tackle though in the end from Chris Johns and a late heavy challenge from Peter Ryan we're going to take it a quick penalty Botica's away great tackle again from Kenneth Walters oh good play by the New Zealander Botica there caught them on the hop this is a fire And they're holding on to the Wigan players as they're on the ground. Crompton, it came off his foot, says the referee, and went backwards. Play on. This is Panapa. They have the scent of a comeback on the terraces and on the field with Edwards. Dermot directing operations from Dummy Hart. Crompton. Crompton long pass to Clark. Clark, it bounced off the arm of Renault up in the air and Brisbane have it and for a moment the excitement dies down well it does die down and Steve Renoff did a great job there for Brisbane to get his hand in between the pass they had three men on his outside if the pass had have found the right hands they were a definite chance in the corner Brisbane under a lot of pressure now a little bit of fatigue starting to set in the crowd rising the Wigan team reacting to that now Brisbane looking to come out of their own territory with no mistakes and a good kick at the end of it. Lazarus is in possession. Kerrod Walters who's had a wonderful match. Madison spreading the ball to Kevin Walters. This is Runoff. He's but, 10 metres inside his own half of the field. One thing about it, Peter, Brisbane have worked the angles well. They've switched the ball all the time. It really has caused a lot of confusion in the Wigan defence. Well, that's right. There's, as I said earlier, all the Brisbane players can use the football and their support play is very good and obviously when they're running out of space the angle is the, the best option to take and also just to put the defender in two minds Jason Robinson for Wigan Lucas has come on Philip Clark is off there's Phil Clark taking his place on the bench worked hard tonight as they all have the players of both sides Crompton slips I'd still like to see Wigan maybe run the football on the last tackle a lot of the Brisbane players are dropping back, expecting the kick. Might be able to take advantage of that with an overlap. It was Lucas running very strongly. That was the fifth tackle. What will they do here? Will they run it or will they kick it? Well, they should have kicked. Mistake from Dermot. Well, I don't know if they should have kicked, but Martin Dermot should have kept his eye on the football. That's for sure. Yeah, no doubt about it. You can see there on the replay, he's looking at the man coming towards him. Big handling error count against Wigan, 12-7. Not often you see that sort of uh, figure against Wigan's name in that department, Mike, is it? Well, it, it's been discipline has been their key to success for many years, and they've lost it tonight. The Broncos, 10 metres inside the Wigan half of the field, in possession with Gilmeister. Great tackle from Ian Lucas. Now with Madison, the loose forward. Well, the axe got really chopped then. You've been waiting for that one, haven't you? <laughs> you noticed. Little chip over the top. A fire's there. A fire's dropped it. O'Neill 
and Ofire has made a hash of that, and he's given the Broncos six more tackles. They might not need them. This is Johns. Johns almost all the way. Just held up by Lucas and Cowie. Broncos so close. Ryan slips. That is how close Brisbane are to a match winning try. Ball's fed out wide. It's with Hancock. Hancock! Wigan just closed the door with Farrah and Cowie working over time. John Platt is the acting halfback. It's with Kevin Walters. Long pass straight to Dean Bell. Bell gets it second attempt. Finds Sternman. He gives it to Robinson. Exciting player. Brisbane are making some mistakes. Fortunately for them, they're making them at the other end of the field. Mind you, look at Wigan. They are too, aren't they? Well, they've got to be a little bit more desperate, Wigan, don't they? They've got to score the points. Brisbane really just need to control the football and roll that last kick into the in-goal area and try to get another six. But they have come up with three mistakes the last three times they've been down in the opposition 22. Dermot with a little kick over the top that uh, worked for them before. It's not working now because Willie Kahn has it. And he's away from one, and he has support from Renoff, and Renoff has support on the far side with Khan, and that's the World Club Championship. It's Michael Hancock who has scored the try on that far side of the field. Hancock, that's the World Club Championship for the Brisbane Broncos. That surely is the clincher. Well, the ball comes out wide from the kick. You see the winger. And Khan sets off, tries to do the step. You see that the Wigan defence have come through. There's only one man come forward. Lovely positional play there by Renouf coming on the inside, giving him the option. The crowd went berserk. They thought it was forward. I may agree with them, but it's all to avail. This was a poor kick from Martin Dermott. It wasn't a great chase, and he tried to create something out of nothing. And you see on the far side, the Wigan defence have not moved up as one. They were very slow to react. Dean Bell was well beaten by Willie Kahn, who found Renoff on the inside. That's the angle that Mike Stevenson was talking about. And then a suspect part thrown at the end there. Michael Hancock scored the try. Really not a good piece of play there by Wigan. The kick wasn't on, and they didn't chase it once it had been executed. No, they look very tired indeed. With full credit to the winger, Michael Hancock. Hancock with the try then, that's the one that has surely clinched this World Club Challenge now. Madison with the conversion attempt, and he's kicked it too, just to rub salt well and truly in the Wigan wound. Four minutes to go, 20 points to eight. He's had a very good game, Terry Madison, both attack and defence and his goal kicking as well. He really has silenced this big Wigan crowd. And you've got to be a classy player to be able to do that. 22-8 then, with that extra two from Matheson. Sad night for Wigan, sad night for Maurice Lindsay, the former chairman who bows out of the Wigan boardroom tonight and takes over the chief executive role at Chapeltown Road on Monday morning. But a great night for Brisbane and Crompton and John Platt swapping punches yeah. for 2.14. Silly stuff there. It's it's not a, a really sad night for Wigan. They've been a, a marvellous club for many seasons now and it's no disgrace to be beaten by a team of the calibre of this Brisbane side. I'm sure that the Wigan side would have liked to have played better tonight. But again, in many ways, you can only play as well as the, op the opposition allows you to. And Brisbane have been on their game after a relatively s slow start. Dean Bell taking the quick tap. They haven't stopped trying all night. And I do think the Wigan fans can be well and truly proud of their team. They haven't given up. They haven't given up, but I think their supporters have. They're on their way to the exits, streaming out to continue the inquests on this match. The first time that the World Club Challenge has been won by the Premiers from Australia. Well, that looked a pretty high one to me there. Gil Meister really did go into it. He certainly hasn't given up the ghost. He's not retiring. Crompton tried to feed a fire. Fire overran it. Collided as well. 
with the loose forward Matteson. I think, Eddie, when the Wigan fans and the players and their coach John Mooney sit down after this game, they'll realise the two things that's been important for their success, discipline and defence, has let them down tonight. Something very unusual. Yes, there will be people, I suppose, who will point fingers and say that the club game in this part of the world isn't as strong as perhaps some people think it is. But Brisbane, they're coming into this match, of course, fresh as daisies. And again, I go back to the fact that they have had a very good preparation coming into this game. As the touch judge has seen something in the tackle. Dean Bell on Steve Brenoff, which is our penalty, will probably go to the Brisbane team we see Dean Bell wrapping Renoff up off goes the headgear and Crompton comes over the top well I don't know didn't well, seem to be too much there I just got the impression made the touch that store that Bell had ripped that off but you can see in the replay that was incorrect the Brisbane have had a good preparation coming into this they've had a lot of players on test duty so their celebrations after the grand final were probably curbed a little bit by that their mind was put back onto the job and they're a fairly special football team. As I say, they had a, a very good season at home, only losing something like four or five games through the domestic competition. And to do that, it takes a very, very good football side. And they've proven it once again tonight. That's what they are. And then to win this uh, competition in Wigan's own backyard, a tremendous achievement by the men from Brisbane. And there is the final moment of this match. The Broncos were the winners by 22 points to eight. Wigan, well, they will certainly live to fight another day. They play the uh, Sheffield Eagles in the first division here on Monday. But Sean Edwards, disappointed man at Wembley last Saturday. Disappointed man again here tonight. But Eddie, nice to hear a generous round of applause there from these Wigan fans. A tremendous crowd here tonight, a great atmosphere. I'm sure the Australians love playing out there in front of what are a very receptive audience. And even though their side have been beaten, the Wigan fans certainly not backwards in showing their appreciation of a fine football team and a very good performance. So the Broncos running out winners, 22 points to eight. They win the World Club Championship. And of course, going with that is a nice uh, little bit of prize money and $100,000. Right now, let's go to the presentation. And Alan Langer now leads his men to receive the World Club Challenge Trophy from the retiring chief executive of the Rugby Football League, David Oxley. And Brisbane Broncos are the World Club Champions for 1992. So many people thought there would be red and white ribbons hanging from that, but it's the maroon, yellow and white ribbons of the Brisbane Broncos. And so, all the major silverware is now in Australia. We'll get it back though, Peter, don't you worry about that. Well, you're going to keep trying, I know that. <laughs> but there's certainly not much difference between the competition these days. You have a look at the international game last week. One missed tackle, one try was the only difference. And I think that's about the only thing that Terry Madison's dropped all day, the uh, lid for the trophy. He had a great match, didn't he? And you've all got, also got to say that it was a 17-man effort. John Plath came on, played well. Tony Curry brought into the game at quite an early stage. Peter Ryan and Brett Plowman both got a run out there. Some disappointment there from Wigan. But it was a great 17-man performance. And that's what you need to win games. You can't go in with a good 13. You've got to have some great depth there as well. Terry Madison, by the way, the man of the match. And the dejection on the face of the uh, Wigan players is there for all to see, but uh, they will now come up and receive their losers' tankards. Disappointing night for the men in cherry and white, but let's be honest, they've had their fair share of silverware over the years, haven't they? But I think you were right uh, earlier on, Peter Sterling, in saying that uh, the moment that Andy Platt went off perhaps was the moment when Wigan really knew they were pushing it uphill a bit. Well, it didn't help their cause, Eddie. He's a great player, and on what I've seen at the international level over the last 12 months, I think he is the best forward in the world. 
Uh, we, we talk of Bradley Clyde in that breath, but Bradley unfortunately has been dogged by injury over that period of time. And Andy Platt really has taken that mantle, and every game I've seen him play, he's had a major impact. Unfortunately for Wigan tonight, that impact wasn't allowed to, to be introduced. And yes, I'm sure that he was thoroughly missed out there this evening. Dean Bell leads the Wigan players up then for the losers' tankards. Sean Edwards, second time in a week, so two margin of fire. Billy McGinty, who had to retire in the second half. Frano Bottega, smiling in defeat. And Kelvin Skerritt, no one worked harder than him after he came out of the blood bin. Andre Stoop, the fullback. And Jason Robinson, certainly one for the future. So a terrific result there for the Broncos. They are the champions, and uh, they played well enough, and there's nobody could deny that they uh, they were worthy winners there, Paul. No, they're a fantastic side, the Broncos. They could be the Sydney Premiers for years and years to come, and it was a great game. Uh, Wigan just not good enough on the night. Too many mistakes for them, and it's good to see an Aussie side bring that uh, club championship back home. Well, you are uh, got a couple of days up in the Gold Coast, and then you're going down for the uh, Adelaide Grand Prix. You're not racing. You're actually no. playing football, aren't you? They won't give me a start in the car race, but uh, I'm playing a game down there. The South Australian Rugby League are playing against the Gold Coast side, which is touring down there. It should be a, a good game for the old battlers like myself for pulling the boots out again. Well, good on you. Look forward to your company down there. And uh, we look forward to your company again when we next meet, which will be for the Adelaide Grand Prix. Until then, bye for now. another presentation from Nine's Wide World of Sports.